Amidst the Warriors' early season struggles, which we'll get right into, Steph is currently the only 20-plus point-per-game score in the association with a 50-40-90 shooting line. He's averaging 32.6 points per game, and most recently became the first player ever to record at least 47 points, 8 boards, and 8 dimes, while turning the ball over 0 times. Much is made about the defiance of father time from LeBron James, and for good reason, but we don't talk enough about how Curry's on the verge of turning 35 in the 14th year of his career, yet has never looked better over the last half decade. Based off the Warriors' brutal 4-7 start, it's safe to say the team leader in points, dimes, and boards in Curry, along with Wiggins, who's averaged an efficient 18 points while leading the team in steals and blocks, need more help. That help needs to come in the form of more consistent production from players like Jordan Poole and Klay Thompson, who have to remember who they were all throughout the 2022 playoffs. In last spring's first round, Jordan, Clay, and Steph became the first Warriors trio to average 20 points per game in a playoff series since Run TMC in 91. Now, in 22-23 so far, two of those players in Jordan and Clay aren't coming close to that type of production. In the 2022 NBA Finals, Jordan Poole became the youngest player ever to make five threes in a finals game, but has been one of, if not the dub's most disappointing player this year. Considering the entire league has put a target on Golden State's back, there generally needs to be more of a collective buy-in and focus. While Golden State misses a crucial piece to their team in Dante DiVincenzo, who's battling a bad hamstring, aside from Stephen Curry and Andrew Wiggins, the sense of urgency, focus, and chemistry from the rest of the roster just isn't there right now. Golden State's currently the only team in the league other than the LA Lakers without a road win. While the Warriors have a top four offense, they haven't been willing to get down and dirty defensively, and therefore own just the 27th best defensive efficiency. The Warriors rank dead last as a team in plus minus, and 29th in three point field goal percentage. With all defensive team member Gary Payton II going to Portland, an extremely reliable 3 and D guy in Otto Porter, now thriving for my hometown team in the Toronto Raptors, and Nemanja Bialica, who went overseas, the Warriors' young players and free agent pickups haven't lived up to expectations in bigger roles so far on either end of the court. James Wiseman has been a straight liability on both ends of the floor, and Moses Moody and Jonathan Kaminga haven't shown too much offensive development in their limited roles off the bench. If the season's going to turn around for Golden State, the defensive leadership from the older guys and the defensive IQ from the younger guys needs to reach a different level. Golden State needs to collectively remove the target teams have placed on their back and put the same red dot on the backs of their opponents. How do they do that? Well, if you play these regular season games like it's the championship, I give the dubs a chance at winning on any given night. The turning point for the Warriors' rough start, which has featured both head-scratching no-calls from the officials, which have gone both ways, and a lack of urgency to hold defenders in front of them and pick up on the back end for each other, may have happened against Sacramento. After Steph went off for 47 points, he spoke on the technical he picked up in that game, saying, I see a lot of jokes about me kicking the chair a couple years ago and us going on a run after that. Maybe that'll be this year's version of that, end quote. Just look at how their finals opponent in the Boston Celtics were terrible for the first three months of the season and had the greatest turnaround of all time. It's way too early for them to panic. But we have to go back to that 22 season and playoffs to properly evaluate the one dominant quality in Steph's repertoire, which he uses to manipulate defenses on a gamely basis. The film currently on your screen is a video titled 21 plus minutes of Stephen Curry isolations, and of course we won't come close to watching the whole upload. The clips were compiled from last year's season where he played 64 games, and last year's playoffs where he played 22 games. For there to be that many highlights from last season alone of not just Stephen Curry's buckets, but isolation buckets in particular, says a lot about how the man can generate easy baskets for himself. The defensive gravity that Steph draws, combined with his pure feel for the game and offensive wherewithal, make him a shot-creating mastermind. You can see how rangy Curry's gravity truly is on plays like this, where Maxi Kleba is forced to switch onto him, Curry draws him out to nearly half court, whips out a between the legs momentum to his offhand, getting him enough space for the step back, but instead decides to freeze Kleba with a hesitation to get a wide open layup off a quick first step. 
nifty combinations leading to curry slides and ambidextrous attacks and finishes, gets Curry anything he wants off the dribble and at the rim. Back off even the slightest bit, and the now out of the league LaMarcus Aldridge gets a taste of what happens. This 21 minute video we're looking at of Steph repeatedly exposing any defender placed in front of him displays how much he individually manufactured buckets when Golden State needed it most. Also displaying that, Curry was the most efficient isolation scorer of the 2022 playoffs, scoring 1.14 points per possession in one-on-ones. In those playoffs, over 60% of Curry's made threes didn't hit the rim at all, and this man was undeniably the clutchest player in the league, as with the game within 5 points and under 5 minutes left, Steph had the most points in the clutch of any player to go along with a 66.4% true shooting mark. On the topic of above average true shooting, over the Warriors' first 11 games of 22-23, Steph's had the second highest true shooting percentage among players who average at least 15 points per game, only behind Phoenix's Iron Man, Mikhail Bridges. Keep in mind, Steph's averaging an NBA second best points per game average, only behind Luka Doncic of 32.6. In terms of Curry's value in Golden State's locker room, while DiVincenzo's currently injured, he's been around the team enough to get a feel for that quality. Here's what Dante had to say about Curry's leadership. You know, I played with a really dominant, great leader in Milwaukee, in Giannis. Um, and coming here, obviously hearing a bunch about Steph, he's really shocked me um, in terms of like actually how down to earth as a person, down to earth as a leader, and as a basketball player, and just how damn good he is. Um, and I think that's what I knew. I, I had a certain level of expectation, and he blew that out the water. Um, and also, I think the greatest thing is about him on the court and off the court, um, he's always willing to listen. Um, and I think that's what makes him such a, a good leader and such a good player, because obviously he knows other people see different things. Um, and he can blow you off at any time, but he doesn't. And I think that's the biggest thing as a leader that's important. All that said, one of the best to ever lace him up needs his primary supporting cast members to get it together. Jordan Poole's averaging just 10.5 points per game on brutal efficiency this month. Klay Thompson may be averaging 5 points more than that, but he also hasn't been efficient. Who needs to step up for Steph the most in your opinion? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out and the top 5 commenters by December 21st earn free merchandise of their choosing. Today's speaks winner is Josh Budge who says, I think the most underrated member of the Jazz is coach Will Hardy. He's younger than Mike Conley and Rudy Gay. He's done an incredible job of getting the Jazz to buy into the system that helps everyone thrive. He's a rookie coach that started his NBA career as a video room guy with the Spurs. The amount of knowledge and presence of mind that he possesses as a 34 four-year-old cannot be overlooked. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.